Hey folks, Helkrex here. Well, I am just doing a little update here. Or actually, it's not an update. It's kind of a solo war gaming here. I showed this in the last last uh, Musty War Gamers. You know, the Guns of August. It's an Avalon Hill game. I've had this game for forty years. I think it is around forty years. You know, I used to play it all the time when I was a youngster, teenager, with my brother. And basically, the Guns of August is a World War I uh, board game. Uh, you can see here. Uh, basically, all your bit of information here. What is it? 80 wood, I guess. And <clears throat> so what you have is, you know, warfare start in 1914. Uh, you have Germany... France, then you got Belgium, Netherlands, Denmark didn't get involved in anything, and then we got England, Switzerland, and once still is hiding out, being nice and quiet. Italy is actually can be an ally of the France and Britain. It was not an ally of Germany. It's like they had is like Austria, Hungary, and Italy. We're butting heads because they want each wanted the same territory right in this area. And they were throwing a lot of interest in wanting... Because this was all the Austrian-Hungarian Empire right here. And the war started because of Serbia down here. So this is basically where the war started. And because, you know, Archduke Ferdinand got shot. And... Austria-Hungaria decided to invade Serbia and kick their butt, you know, being that they were small. And Austria-Hungaria said, yeah, we're big. We can take care of this. And it ended up striking the match of the World War One. And over here we got Montenegro, Albania, and Greece, Bulgaria, Turkey, which is the Ottoman Empire. Romania, and then all over through here is Russia. That's all Russia. As you can see, Germany, there is no Poland, because where Poland is, they took all this territory from Germany and gave it to Poland. And they all this area here got carved out as the new Polish uh, country right there. And over here you had East Prussia, basically, at, during World War II. But this whole area right here is all Germany. So the little blots there, you got uh, forts. There's a fort over here, forts, etc. So, so we have lots of counters to go with it. And here we got Austria. And let's see, Greece and Montenegro. We got Britain. Then we got the British tokens. And, okay, that's there. Then we got Italy. It's like all these tokens right here. They're just bags of tokens. And more just basic tokens. There's more of the basic tokens. Romania. Obviously, not very many Romanian for the size they have. They didn't have a really big army. Then we got Belgium and Netherlands. They just take up a little bit of space over there. Russia has a few tokens. They're not really powerful. There's their units. A lot of them are twos, two fours. Def better at defense, not really good attacking. They have some, some three fives, some basic infantry. And if you look at, uh, here we got the Germans artillery is three three. 3-5 infantry, 5-7 infantry. They had some good infantry units. A lot of just mediocre. Average. And here we got France. Their tokens. Over there. And then we have the Americans. 1917-18. Eventually they show up. So well, they're pretty good. And they got some good infantry. Well strength. Now... There are scenarios that you can play. You can play the different scenario setups, you know, each year. 
that goes with it. Uh, it's just showing where the forces, what they have for their buildup, what they're going to have for how many different units, core size, on what front. It's like uh, Germany has 36 on the western front, 12 on the eastern front. And then they have 15 and 5 for the replacement value with the they can bring in and this shows you on this chart what is available for your different type of units that you're going to have for everything so you pull them out of the bags sort them out then you set them up so it's pretty simple and then you have weather charts uh, victory conditions there's your sequence of, sequence of play then your reinforcement schedule what does show up they're gonna, you're gonna have troops show up eventually, just like the Americans have units slowly trickling in, starting in 1917 in June. You just start seeing unit, 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 unit start piling in. Eventually, it helps on the Western Front push everything out. Then you also have a variable entry table showing when they're gonna um, possibly show up. So. It is possible. So, let's see, where is it at? There we go. Combat results table, one to one, two to one, three to one, you know, etc. Definitely don't want to attack at one to one or two to one. A lot of times you try to get your attacks at three to one, four to one as high as possible. Put as much strength into your attack to obliterate your enemy. Because you don't want exchanges because then your units just start disappearing quickly. And then naval stuff. Now the, there's some alternate variable rules that you can download that add um, navy, naval forces into it, uh, which you can print out, and uh, then you can have naval battles because obviously along the coast up here, you know there is. If you have any type of enemy unit near a coastline, you can add, throw their strength into the bombardment type thing. Then you got invasion. Invasion force. I played games where I had the British invade into uh, Germany from right here. There's other times it just failed epically, but yeah, that's a nice little sneak attack. Typically, the British come in, you know, start moving in from those areas. So that's pretty much uh, kind of a quick rundown of what the game is like. And hopefully, if I remember, I'll, once I get this set up, I'll maybe do a turn after turn type of thing. Curtis over there at uh, the GM, he every once in a while does a play by play, turn by turn, you know, with his board game. So that's kind of the inspiration for this. So we'll uh, see what I can do with this. You know, something I can do at night when I'm not painting. I'll just set this up and play a turn or so a day or every other couple days. All right. Hope you guys like this. Uh, it's something different that's not miniature related, but you know this is kind of the core of what I did before I started miniature painting or miniature playing games like that. I played a ton of board games, so it's in my blood. All right, we'll talk with you later. Alcrex out.